Last November, unemployed poet Robert Twigger was surfing the net looking for easy money. In his search for poetry competitions to enter, he came across a very large prize indeed. $50,000 for a 30-foot snake. It seems like such a, you know, 19th century kind of idea. That, that intrigues me in itself, the fact that a prize for a very big animal doesn't seem like a modern kind of idea at all. Set up in 1910 by former US President Teddy Roosevelt, the money was offered to anyone who could deliver a 30-foot snake alive to the Bronx Zoo, New York. It has never been claimed. I probably have as much chance at getting the longest snake in the world as I would of writing a, a world-beating poem. The only problem is I don't know much about snakes and I'm not uh, uh, you know, very brave when it comes to dangerous animals. So that side is, is you know, problematic. Um, but the, 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 right now I'm prepared to be blinded by the, the huge sum of money. I mean, there are a few things I wouldn't do for $50,000, but there are a lot of things I would do for $50,000, and uh, searching for a, for a big snake is one of those things. Twigger is heading for the Bronx Zoo in New York, not just the home of the prize, but also of Samantha, the longest snake in captivity. He's meeting with the curator of the reptile house to size up this massive creature. John, we're looking at Samantha here, and I've really only got one question. Is this the longest snake in the world? I don't think she's probably the, the longest snake in the world, but she is probably the, the longest snake that's in captivity. In captivity, right. But Have there been many claims to try and get the prize? Robert, since 1910, yeah. Samantha was the only attempt, and she fell very far short of the mark. Samantha, a reticulated python, was about eight feet short of the mark when she was bought from a snake dealer in 1992. To bolster her reputation as the longest snake in the world, the is she is occasionally measured. So what we have here is a, is a but measuring very long snakes if, uh, is an inexact was... science. I'm surprised in America they haven't developed some special machine for, for stretching putting, the snake Putting out. them on the rack <laughs> and, and stretching them out. No, this is, At uh, the Bronx, they measure three times science, and take the average as the true length. The last time we her was Watching them do it, I could see that measuring snakes yeah. would always be a tricky business. The figures range from 25 feet to 22 feet, but I think it was closer to the lower end, around 22, 23. What if I managed to get a snake that was just a bit longer than Samantha? Would you be interested? I would be interested if it was a male. If it was a male, right. not if it's a female. Um, would there be a, a financial consideration here? Well, it's, it's, it's not a secret, I don't think, what we've paid, paid for Samantha. We paid uh, $15,000 US. So 15000 so maybe a bit of inflation. What Twigger knows, but the Bronx Zoo doesn't, is that five months earlier, a Malaysian newspaper reported the capture of a 10-meter, or 33-foot snake. The snake is now housed safely in the Taiping Zoo. If the report is true, it could be the easiest $50,000 of Twigger's life. If it is a 30-foot snake, I don't really know how we're going to get it out, because inevitably there's the fact of keeping quiet about the prize, which makes it a bit of a double cross. So, Dr. Kevin, what we received in England was a newspaper report that someone had captured 
a snake that was 10 meters long. So we've arrived here to try and find out, is that, is that true? Yeah, I suppose you'll find out very soon. Yes, very soon, yes, as, yeah. I, as I go around this corner or somewhere, or am I supposed yes. to be looking at it? We are actually looking at the python exhibit at our zoo. Right. And we have seven pythons in here, among which is the one that is... Over there? Mm, no, I think it's most probably oh, that right. one. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> the one that it. looks larger, yeah. Ah, right. It's pretty big. Yeah, and, it looks and, big. And is that 10 meters? Well, if you ask me, I, I don't think it is. Right. Okay. It's not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I really wanted it to be, uh, well, you know, that's life, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's a bit, bit sad because we're. Um, we got so excited when we saw that story, 10 meter snake. Having come this far, I had to, I had to measure it. it. Wasn't that I didn't trust him, but uh, I wasn't going to go away without measuring it. That's it. Don't really want to get too close to this one. <laughs> At the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't going to be 30 feet long, but a full 10 feet shorter than the newspaper report is disappointing. OK, we're at the 10 foot mark here. The thing is, it didn't look 10 feet shorter than the newspaper report. So 18, God knows what a 30 foot 19, snake oh, is going to look like. 20 feet and, oh, I noticed that, 21 feet, 3 inches. Absolutely okay. horrific. Well, what would you, would you say is the minimum number of men to, to handle a snake of this size? A, size, a snake this size, I would say at least, I don't know, from my estimate, I would say at least six people. Six people yeah. for a snake this size. And what would you say is about the longest that one man could handle? One man? Yeah. Again, depends on his experience. Right. Uh, totally if, you, if, you guy, if you talk about a guy who is basically dealing with snakes, yeah. well, you must ask a guy who's basically dealing with snakes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But once, that, once it was stretched out and um, all those guys were holding it down, I felt pretty cool. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, you know, I thought secret of this business is to have good assistance. That's the secret. I mean, obviously you can't go in on your own. I, mean, I, didn't, I wasn't thinking of going in, just me. It is, a, it is a tabloid idea, trying to catch the largest snake in, in the world. But I don't think of it like that. I'm not interested in catching the largest buffalo in the world, or the biggest anteater. Snakes are different. I wouldn't say I'm paralysed by, uh, by fear of snakes, but I would like to be less fearful of snakes and I would like to control the panic reaction that I know I have to snakes. And I'd like to be in the position of somebody who could be um, quite cool about it. If Twigger is to have any chance of catching the longest snake in the world, he needs to confront his fears. So is he hurting himself too? Yeah, that's why I always have the clothes to the cloth. Yeah. He's just knocking himself out. And in the back streets of Taiping are the ideal the therapists. Oh, Put your lips nearby, don't worry. <laughs> Wait, my lips are dry. <laughs> Hussein and Muhammad Ali, oh, yeah. a.k.a. the Snake Brothers. That's nice. You can, you can go slowly, kiss on top. On top not, of the head. Not mouth, mouth to mouth, okay? <laughs> I was extremely That's nice. he frightened of this King Cobra. No, go closer, go closer. A little bit. Here, here. Your body can come here, no right, problem. Okay. No so more handshaking anymore. It was a bit That's like being thrown in at the deep end. Straight, don't, don't but there's no way I was ever going to kiss it. Yeah. Um, go straight, straight. I, I, I said to myself, if I touch its head, <laughs> I'm pleased. 
I'm, I'm happy. On top. Oh, it's good, great, you, hey. I think, um, you know, a man's got to know his limitations. <laughs> I'm in a very different league yeah. to yeah. snake experts, yeah. people like uh, Ali and Hossein. You want to hold a hit? Maybe later. Yeah. <laughs> I'm right at the bottom. And if I'm going to go after this big snake, I'm going to need someone like them. I mean, I don't mind holding the tail, but uh, I'm going to be a long way from the head. <laughs> so, Hussein, I've got something to tell you. Um, there's a zoo in America that's offering $50,000 for anyone who can catch a snake longer than 30 feet. It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, even for $50,000. I like the money, <laughs> of course I like the money, but uh, I don't think so. There are 10 meter vertical to python. I've never seen in my life. We can go for hunting. Fantastic. But I cannot promise for the 10 meter. <laughs> okay? Okay. Two meter, yes. Two meters. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two meters only gets $10. Yeah. <laughs> the Snake Brothers lead Twigger through the oil palm plantations for stage two of his training, field work. It's a routine trip for the brothers, since their beloved king cobra subsists on a diet of baby reticulated pythons. Yeah, sometimes you can Right. Why are we walking along the river, not on the bank? The snakes, it can't feel, you know. He can't, feel, he can't hear the vibration of the. We're walking on the river, you know, in a jungle. So more vibrations from the, the bank. More vibrations than from he the. He can feel it from the river. In Sadr Run. Right. Oh la la! Got one. Can you see that? Nope. Oh, the yeah. other one beside that. Yeah. There are two. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah. You can see them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a pretty nice size. That's quite big, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the first one. Than... <coughs> yeah, but it's a long way up. How are we going to get up? <laughs> okay. Uh, Ali going to just give a small poke to the, the nearest python. Yeah. And he might be can drop down. So you're going to use a net. Uh huh. You know? Like this. Yeah, because normally. Snakes are jumped down the head first. Head first. So you have to put a net. You don't worry, you only use a net. Right. I'm going to use a bare hand. Why can't you put a bigger net? <laughs> <It's> a longer <laughs> Next handle. time I prepare for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's more easier. Okay, Robert, ready? Are you going to poke it down? Okay. Are you ready? ready? Yeah. Okay, ready. One, one, two, go! Okay, okay Robert, ready? ready. That's why I say I want to use my bare hand, you know? <laughs> I, I know believe you cannot do that. So You're right. <laughs> <laughs> it hit the branch. That was the problem. It hit that branch and just deflected. Yeah, I know, I saw that. If it had come straight down, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I would have done it. <laughs> Okay, that's, that's been feeding too. Yeah, uh, maybe a uh, mice or yeah. a squirrel. Okay, yeah, Robert, you fail your, in your first exam. <laughs> you want to try to do the best thing for, for yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> At least I didn't get bitten. Python bites are, by all accounts, extremely nasty. Though they're not poisonous, they don't have venom. The reticulated python has six okay. rows of teeth and they've got lots of rotting meat in between yeah, them and if you get bitten oh, yeah, by a yeah, python yeah. chances are even if you don't lose lots of blood it'll probably go septic and um, may result in gangrene and blood poisoning and, uh, and ultimately death. Okay, that's nice. So you can imagine the big, big one. one. Can imagine if a um, 10 meter. Less aggressive. <laughs> More aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> However aggressive they may be in theory, the brothers are convinced that 10 meter snakes simply don't exist. 
skinny size, but uh, he's a multi-millionaire. So he's rich, but he doesn't eat a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But if anyone in Taiping is likely to know better, it's R.B., the Mr. Big of the Malaysian snakeskin trade. You should make sure the knife is very sharp. You know, just one chop. The head must be out. So what's the longest size snake? Can you ask him what the longest snake he's had? Abi ya, selama yang paling panjang snake berapa? Yang besar ini panjang. Dia habis pun 25 kan? 25 This is the maximum is 25 feet long. The longest he's seen? He's seen. He bought. So does, it, does he think we can get a 30 foot snake? Seeing this has changed my perspective on snake skin boots or a snake skin jacket. I wouldn't wear them. Not interested in wearing them. God. But for our mission, there's no chance of a 30 foot python in Malaysia, not with all this snake hunting going on. So we've got to go to some really remote places that he's never even heard of. Yeah. Has he ever heard of Buru Island? Abi, you pernah pergi ke Indonesia Buru Island? Right. He's never been there. Good, good. <laughs> he said, maybe, maybe you can see that. <laughs> maybe. All I need is a maybe. <laughs> maybe. In search of the big snake, Twigger is leaving behind the devastating Malaysian snake trade. He's heading deep into Indonesia. I was inspired to come to Buru because of the great 19th century evolutionary biologist Alfred Russell Wallace, who came here in 1861. He wrote that Buru was famous for having an awful lot of big snakes, and I've discovered there's no snake trade either, so that's another good sign. Twigger has enlisted the help of one half of the Snake Brothers, Muhammad Ali and to translate for them both, an Indonesian poet called Bramantio. Twigger's plan is to follow the route outlined in Wallace's journal, in search of the descendants of his giant snakes. That's what I'm interested in, to see, to see the sort of things that Wallace did. And, and Mohammed is probably the, probably the first, first animal collector to come here since Wallace's time. <laughs> That's why he's wearing his dark glasses. He doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want to be recognized. <laughs> it's called Hunting Island. The name Buru, Buru means, yeah? means hunting island. Yeah? Hunting island, yes. mm. Mm. Bram's useful for a number of reasons. One, he's a very good uh, translator. He's, uh, he's always cheerful. He's always cracking jokes. And the thing about snakes is that uh, it's, because it's an obsessive activity, it's very easy to lose your sense of humor. He's very good with people. So in the snake business, I'm beginning to discover it's more it's more people business than snake business. Di pinggir sungai ada jejak ular. He's seen snake tracks by the river. Having put the word about that they're interested in big snakes, the snake stories come flooding in. Tidak ada gua-gua. I mean, five minutes ago there are caves on the other side of the swamp. Okay. The team follow up the leads, but the snakes are proving elusive. About that big? Right. Three, four meters? Three, four meters. It's very, very frustrating because there are lots of stories coming in. Yeah. And the snake is always huge. It's always, you know, the width of a barrel of oil or something. The snake was about that big. Really, it's, it's proving an exercise in psychology rather than zoology. Reading reading the man and working out whether the story is true before we even go looking for the snake. Here in the coastal village of Pella, one man's stories have more credibility than most. Adam Alu is the man the locals turn to when they have a snake problem. Di rawa itu ular yang panjangnya 9 meter atau lebih. Ada. Ada ya? Ada. Pernah lihat ya? Ya, pernah. Yes, he thinks there is a 
nine meter snake in the in the swamp. He, he, it's been seen. Okay, yeah. so we just got to go out and get it. Uh, yeah. yeah, this okay. is a good story. Okay. <laughs> The big snake is reputed to live in the impenetrable swamp behind the village. What does that mean? So, forward without fear, we go hunting for the snake. With little chance of even seeing a snake in this terrain, they're heading for the river that drains the swamp. Mohammed thinks the snake may feed on animals that go to drink there and it's there that they intend to trap it. How's this net going to work, Mohammed? Okay, this string must yeah. be this high from yeah. the water. Yeah. Because the snake always is taking this way. Along the know? surface. Yeah. Yeah. So this must be very tight. Yeah. And the other side, it must be very loose because right. once it bang here, you will struggle. Right. All the snakes with the, this net and, yeah. the, and the stick there come over here, stuck here. Right, so it gets into a big ball with the net around it. With yeah. 10 nets laid in the swamp, all they have to do, in theory, is wait. As he'd already several times shot large snakes, which he declared were all as nothing compared with this, I'm inclined to believe it must really have been a monster. Such creatures are rather plentiful here. For a man living close by, showed me on his thigh the marks where he had been seized by one close to his house. As far as I could make out, it was about 20 feet long, but Ali's was probably much larger. More than a century after Wallace's visit to Pella, Twigger finds that snake stories still loom large in the local imagination. This woman has asked them to come and deal with a large snake that she's seen under her wood pile. There's a lot of firewood. <laughs> Behind this one or this one, is it? Dia masuk sini. Di sini. Di sini ya. Is she frightened to come in here and show us exactly? Ibu takut datang sini. Takut. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up to us. Yeah. There's a hole down there. I think it went down that hole. Yeah. Which Adam's putting his hand in, so it's probably rather foolish. It's a wild snake. Oil snake. Oil snake. And uh, lady said it was this big? Yeah. And we found this big. What kind of, it's not poisonous, yeah? Not poisonous. Put it in here? Bugger off! Yeah. <laughs> Devil you are! I don't think Robert's had much experience in handling snakes, especially catching snakes in the wild. And a very large snake would be quite dangerous in the wild. He relies completely on the work of the people catching the snake. This is not Robert's, not Robert's sweat. And in the world of nature, it's illegal to lick other people's sweat. Nope. You have to live on your own sweat. No disturbance at all. No. Nothing. I think the less said about the traps, the yeah. better. Uh, we checked all ten. 
absolutely nothing. I think the big snake or fella doesn't come this way, no? So, complete washout. What do you think, Mohammed? Hmm? Do you think it's just because we haven't left them here long enough, or...? Long enough? I think so, there are no snakes here. No snakes? So where are they? Snakes don't go through here. It was our most scientific way of catching the snake as well, so it's, it's pretty disappointing, because now uh, we've run out of uh, kind of sure methods. That's pretty bad. On Adam's advice, the team move on to Tanjung Timban, an uninhabited peninsula that he says is ideal snake habitat. Banyak pokok-pokok ada. Orang pernah cerita ke Adam? Iya, pernah. Even if we don't get this snake, um, I feel it's a it's a good thing to do. I mean, maybe I'm no different from a Victorian big game hunter who employs local guides and skilled huntsmen. But I like to think it was more like being an architect and then you get somebody else to do the building. It's a really rare respiratory illness. It's 100% fatal. It was caused by bat shit. Looks like nobody's ever been here. Yeah. Sure, the Portuguese came though. Yeah, I just bet Wallace came here just to get away from it. Yeah. The caves and rocky outcrops that surround this dried up watercourse provide Mohammed with his last chance for a stake in the prize. The Snake Brothers show is back on the road, on tour in Korea. Mohammed has to leave the following day. Do you think some of these holes could be good? Okay, okay. Loose a bit, loose, loose. One, two. Okay, put. One, two. Wait, wait. To get the hip. Strong strength. You let it go? No. The head's coming out. Oh, right. 
stop. Yes. Okay. Ali mundur sana. Uh. Uh. Robert. How long for you take? You got the tape. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six meters. I say five and a half. Six. Adam, think Adam. Sit in. Seventeen feet. Seventeen feet. So five and a half meters. Oh, this is not oh it's very strong. So what are you going to do with the snake, Robert? Robert, what should we do? We need a dang meter. Bag it. I think we should let it go. Huh? Should let it go. Let it go. I mean this there are no people living near here. Just let it carry on. Maybe if we come back in fifteen years' time it'll be thirty feet long. <laughs> <laughs> Fishing village, yeah. pirate yeah, village. In the past, if they saw an English vessel up here, they'd get into the boats and demand taxes. The boogies. We're hardly a major vessel, are we? <laughs> no, we're not major. Twigger is heading deeper into Indonesia, following Wallace's route to the virgin forests of Seram, three days by boat from Buru. Muhammad Ali, the snake catcher, has returned to Malaysia, so Twigger and Bram have only themselves to rely on in their search for the longest snake in the world. They are hoping to make contact with the Huaulu, an ancient animist tribe whose hunting skills are legendary. I wonder what they'll make of my secret weapon. Mm -hmm. What's that? Snuff. Snuff? Yeah. Irish high toast snuff. Here we are. Keep out of the room. What, what do you do? Just put it on your... On there. Mm -hmm. Just snip it up. Yuck! <laughs> yeah. But this is apparently incredibly poisonous for snakes. Um, one little bit of that, it goes straight into the, into the Jacobson's organ of the snake <laughs> and wipes it out. <laughs> After three pretty heavy days of river travel, jungle trekking, finally got here, and Hualu are one of the most remote peoples in Indonesia. They still have a, an intact animist tradition, and they have caught very long snakes. So if anybody can help us in the hunt for the uh, mythical 30-foot python, I think it'll be these people. On the evening of their first day in the village, Bram and Twigger have been granted an audience with the king. They have the delicate task of persuading him and the elders to take them on a hunt. Twigger is ready to offer some cash, but he's keeping quiet about the prize. I'm very uh, happy to be here, and we have come here because of your skill at hunting, and Hopefully we can use those skills perhaps to get a long snake. I'm just trying to keep a brave face. <laughs> so apparently we've made all kinds of errors as well today. We, we thought we were being convivial, but actually we were being lazy and dumb. So it's been, it's been a bit of, bit of a cultural, cultural cock-up, really. So, um, I mean, heaven knows what anthropologists do. Can I, I ask the king if... He thinks that this is a good time to go for a hunt. Apa saat sekarang ini saat yang cocok untuk pergi berburu, Bapak? Quite, quite a tense meeting. Um, 
probably will have to stay up all night chewing beetle nut. But you know that's the uh, you know that's the price the price you pay for going to uh, places where they still know how to hunt big snakes. The kings agreed to let Twigger and Bram accompany a hunting expedition, but there's a snag. Most of today has been spent waiting, waiting for the king to make an offering, and we can't go on the hunt until he's made this uh, religious offering. And the reason he hasn't made the offering is because a piece of our equipment broke, a piece of recording equipment, and he saw that as bad luck and an ill omen, and he's now biding his time. In fact, he's asleep right now. The king awakens in time for another all-night session of negotiations. Twigger offers more cash, and the omens improve. The hunt is on. After six hours, they've reached the hunting grounds, deep in virgin forest. So while Bram's been uh, skiving off in the river, I tried to help the villagers build a village away from the village, but there's no room for a, a spare body. It's rained continuously for about the last six hours, um, which is a drag for, for walking, but rain is good for snakes. So I think we've come to a good place for snakes. Bram thinks, well, I think he thinks it might be a good place for snakes, but he thinks that I'm um, here for the wrong reasons. If, for instance, the villagers purely intended to get a big snake because they had a disease or something that could only be cured by a big snake, then the big snake would come out to be caught. But we just don't have a good enough reason. I think the reason we are going to catch the big snake is too greedy. And the big snake can, can hear that going on in the mind. Snakes can't detect motives. I think I have to say that. And I can't allow myself to even subscribe a little bit to it, not out here. Otherwise I'll go completely crazy. Uh, there's enough superstition and mumbo jumbo without um, without without us cooking up our own version of it. For the Huaulu, the hunt begins at first light. Bram and Twigger are the last up. Did we sleep? No. It's quite clear that these guys know what they're doing. They obviously live well by hunting. And the way they hunt is to send out dogs to trail and then immobilize the prey. But whether that will work with snakes, um, remains to be seen. They themselves have been a bit cagey on the, on the subject. They shoot its heart, but it seems that the arrows can't go that deep. 
I think it's still a bit dangerous to get close to it now while it's like that. It's got very sharp horns. So now we're sorted for, for our base camp. We can go concentrate on snakes once we've got all this meat for, for our food. Pretty slow process there. Yes, it is. It's a bit shocking to see uh, deer hounded down and then killed fairly inefficiently. I'm beginning to understand now one of, one of Wallace's main problems, which was securing live or undamaged specimens from the interior of Saram, because the first instinct of these people when they get an animal is to kill it. Even though we've told them it has to be a live snake, um, I'm not sure that that's sunk in. Three more days of hunting, and the Huaulu and their dogs have produced more deer, but no snakes. Bram believes Twigger's approach is to blame. I think that I'm not the only one who has a uh, right to a cut. That's... How much do you think I should give them? 50%? Um, well, you'd have to discuss it with the people, I think. What would be a oh, fair... Oh, no. <laughs> what would be a fair... No more discussions. <laughs> well... The biggest snake alive has to want you to catch it alive. Mm. And... OK, 25% is my best offer. <laughs> well... To who? To who all, all the others. others. Who's all the others? You know, all the, all the people who've helped us. Because I think it would spoil them to have too much money. Don't well, you agree? <laughs> no, no, sorry. Despite Bram's advice, Twigger does not tell the tribe about the prize, but he does offer a $750 bounty for any snake over seven metres, with instant effect. So there is a, there is a big snake in the, uh, up near the, the, the source of this river. Right. Yeah, in a, in a tree stump. That's great news. <coughs> great news. Fantastic. Do you feel good? Uh, no. No. <laughs> well, I do. Well, it's really good. Yeah. It's a four-hour trek to the head of the river, home of the big snake. It hasn't been seen since the last rainy season. Even so, the Huaulu seem confident. Revitalized by yet more betel nut and spurred on by the prospect of hard cash, the search intensifies. So it's possible to have a look at it. Can you, can you, you shine your foot? Yeah. Looks about hard to say. Maybe four meters? Maybe. Thing is, who's going to go up there? Who's going to crawl up that log and get that snake? <laughs> the snake's lair is the hollow interior of a rotting 50-foot tree trunk. Okay, so there's a scrub pipe, and so it's really unlikely to be more than five meters, I would say. It's my guess. I think it'll be unlikely to be more than five meters. It seemed only about that big, yeah? The snake that big would be about five, maybe up to six max. But they want it to be seven. Of course they do. Basically, we have to guard all the exits, and then Sophie is going to Sophie or you are going to catch it. Okay. <laughs> well, let's hope Sophie's up to it. Yeah. Because I'm not going in that trunk. <laughs> no. Um, That's a long and dark call. To Twigger's relief, the Huaulu decide on a more cautious approach. After blocking up all the exits, they intend to get at the snake through a new hole cut into the top of the log. It's 
going to come out crawling angrily. So it might be a problem to tie it up. And one thing, we left an island rope back in the base camp, so... Huh? I think it was all our fault, nobody thought about it. <laughs> Especially your, your fault. fault. You're the snake <laughs> expert. I told you to bring that bloody stuff. Sign your move. Sign your move. Let's set it. When I first saw the snake, I immediately knew it was not a scrub python and it was a huge snake. It was a contender. It's huge. I'm getting off this log. With all exits sealed, there's no escape for the snake. But before they go any further, the Huaulu insists that Twigger produces his magic snuff to placate this monster. With just a third of its body out of the log, the Huaulu managed to loose the head of the snake. Don't kill it, guys. Don't kill it. What's he doing? Ask him what he's doing. He looks like he's killing the damn thing. Hey, come in. Has he just killed it? No. Cut the teeth. My major concern as it came out of the hole was, is it going to break free from that piece of rattan and bite me? Even though at the back of my mind was, are we going to keep this alive? Can we ship this back to the states? Somehow, the priorities have changed. Okay, 23 and a half feet. 23 foot, 6 inches. So, we haven't obviously got the uh, $50,000 prize, but still bloody long snake. It's just seven metres. I mean, they get there. They've got. They've done, they've done their work. But I mean. Bagus, master. Bagus, bagus, bagus. Master. I think for a few brief minutes, I had the longest snake in the world in captivity, and to see it being killed was not only an awful lot of money down the toilet. It's very sad. But once that panic had set in. I knew that they were intent on killing it. There was nothing that I could do to stop them. And I could feel myself being sucked in, losing all control. I'm very happy for the tribe that they've caught a seven meter snake. And I'm also very happy that we haven't caught an over 10 meter snake. If there was an over 10 meter snake, the biggest snake in the world, if it was here, I'd rather it stay here than be caught and be taken to a New York zoo. It's incredibly rubbery. This is tender. Was it? Mm. Okay, let's try that one. You don't feel like you've betrayed anything by munching on the snake, do you? No, I'm very happy with the snake. I much prefer the snake was killed and eaten than taken alive to a zoo. So you think the snake feels happier being eaten? Because mm, we're respecting it by eating. Well, if I was that snake, I think I'd be much happier if I was in a bag on my way to a zoo. <laughs> being munched on <laughs> by a whole bunch of bloodthirsty tribesmen. <laughs> I still feel pretty bad that um, we weren't able to save it alive. But I'm prepared to eat it because, you know, I just go along with the crowd. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's not one of the great cuisines <laughs> or dishes of our day. 